Hey guys, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing something that's been very requested. You obviously read the title of this video. We're gonna be doing a wireless hand-wired build. Now, this video is gonna be very different than everything else I've done on my channel so far in the sense that I'm doing it in a non-scripted, more candid format, and this will probably be how I'm doing build videos going forward. And the reason for this is I think I can get a lot of the concepts a lot clearer to you by doing it this way and I can kind of speed stuff up and jump through things but also stop and talk directly about what I'm doing with this view here the new and improved overhead view if we switch back to this view so yeah I think it's probably a good way of doing this with that said this video isn't going to cover so much the code side of things because I think that's better suited to its own video so in a few weeks I'll have a video coming out on that but like usual, all the files for this, including the code, is available in the description if you want to build it yourself or look at that now. Let's hop onto the new and improved overhead cam, and we'll start building this thing. Now, the cool thing about this build here is that I'm using a stacked case. So people have also requested this from me, so if you are curious, it's kind of how you do that. But with that said, I'm using a stacked case that has three parts, so it kind of look like that, which I think looks really cool. And basically, the screws will just go through, and then they can screw onto this top plate here that will be using heat set inserts to actually attach everything. So heat set inserts are very simple. It's just a little tiny thing like this with some knurling on the sides that you can then take and put on the hole you made in your 3D file that you printed out. And you can use a very hot soldering iron and just kind of put it into place. They can be a little bit of a pain in the ass to get positioned properly, but once they start to go, they kind of just sink right down. So you can see right there that we have a heat set insert. So I'm just gonna do that for the rest now. That is basically that part done. The next thing I wanna do is I'm using the socketed technique from my last build, the chalk handwire keyboard, which I will link in the top right, I believe it is. And I'm gonna be using these here, which obviously are pin socket headers, which I can give you a really good look here of how they connect. So basically they just go together and this side will connect to the controller and then this side will go into the plate. And what I have to do is I have to glue these into the actual top part of this first. This way they don't pull out when I try to hot swap the actual controller. And the reason I'm doing this for this build again is that one, I think it looks cool, but also this build, since I'm using a nice nano here, I will be able to actually switch the controller out for a Pro Micro because a nice nano is just a drop in replacement for a Pro Micro. So all the pins will match up identically to a Pro Micro, which is very nice. Now, one other thing with these cutouts that I didn't mention is they're offset. And that's because when you mount the nice nano, it wouldn't be centered if they were exactly in the middle. So I just offset them so it looks centered. Little design choice there I made. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna glue these in now with some UV resin. This way they hold in place and don't pull out when I hot swap everything. When working with UV resins, you're gonna wanna wear gloves because this stuff is what's known as a contact sensitizer. Not many people really realize this stuff. Um, over time, you will 100% develop an allergic reaction to this stuff or sensitivity to it. Um, and that can lead to bad things. So. All right, now I'm ready to use the UV light to actually glue these in. Um, side note about this also, you shouldn't really look at UV light. It's bad for your eyes. It will basically give you sunburn on your eyes. Um, but for something quick like this, it's okay. Just don't be doing it every day. Now, if I push on these, those are in there. Let's talk about the plate for a second here because I've gotten lots of questions on how I do stabilizers with plates, especially when people find out I print my plates at three millimeters, but plate mount stabilizers require 1.5 millimeter thick plate. And the answer to that is that you can see this recessed section right here, if I can get the light just right on it, right there. And you can see that around the stabilizer, I basically make the plate 1.5 millimeters thick while keeping the three millimeter stick that gives the overall plate better rigidity for the switches. So it's kind of the best of both worlds there. And you can see if I take a stabilizer, it will actually click into place just like you would expect. And you can kind of even see there that it is actually clicked in. Now all the switches are on the actual plate. And these are NK yellow silk, NK silk yellow switches. Love these switches. I think they'd be very nice for a numpad. So those are on there. And now we can begin actually soldering everything. But before that, Let's jump out and actually talk. So now normally on a hand-wired board, you would use a matrix, right? You'd have your columns and you have your rows going up and down to connect everything. But since this is a number pad here, I'm able to do something interesting since there's only 17 keys, I can actually use a method called direct wiring where each key will go to a single GPIO pin and then I'll have every single key going to the ground pad. This way I don't need to use diodes, I don't need to use copper wire and it should be pretty straightforward with the downside of there being a big nest of wires. Also, the other downside of this is that you can't do this for every board. If your board has more keys than there are GPIO pins, you're basically out of luck and you just have to use a matrix. Before I actually wire everything up, I wanted to actually talk about this right here, which is the Nice Nano. 
it's basically just a drop in replacement for the Pro Micro, meaning that it has basically the exact same IO as a Pro Micro. So you can easily swap between a Pro Micro and this if you want to make a wired build or a wireless build with the same exact key layout. So now what's nice about these little socket headers is that you can take them and put them in here. But first I want to mention the side with the little circles is what will face up towards your controller. You want to put this longer side down into the actual sockets. So you just mount them in here and then we put the other one in and then you can just take your controller, then solder everything to it and it will be perfectly aligned. When you're working with a nice nano, you want to be lower um, as to not damage the chip. I'm going to do this at 270 seems to be what they recommend. They said, I think 270 to 290. So I'm just going to go through and actually solder everything now. So when you remove these, you want to be very careful to not bend the pins. So what I like to do is take something like a screwdriver. This is kind of safe for one of these controllers because underneath there isn't any controls or anything, any uh, little things soldered on. But if your controller does have stuff on the bottom, this is probably not the proper way to do this. But with this one, I'll just kind of take it. I'll gently lever it up there. And then on this other side, I'll make sure not to hit the USB-C port. Just gently lever it up there again. And then just kind of go back and forth on both sides until I get it high enough to where I can just kind of lift it out like that. There is our controller. You can see the pins are actually on it just like that. And then you can just take it and push it right back down to actually mount it. And when you put it down, you want to just go like that. That's how you socket a controller. So I'm now ready to start wiring everything up. And what I want to mention here is that I'm just going to be using cable from a VGA cable. All I want to do with this is I have to read off my schematic that I already built on the firmware and just match each one of these pins. It doesn't really matter which one to the pins on here. And then I'm going to use a piece of copper wire to mount everything else, every other pin to the actual ground point. So this will probably take a little while. This is the longest part of this entire build. But once this is done, the board is basically complete. I just mount the battery, which I don't know where I put that. I'll have to find that. But I mount the battery and then connect it over Bluetooth and I have a wireless numpad. I am going to take each one of these wires like so. I am going to twist them. And then like I normally do diodes, I'm going to actually wrap them around like this so that I can kind of get them around the actual pin because it'll make it a little bit easier to solder them on. So now you can see by doing it that way, that's on there pretty secure. So this is the schematic I'm going to be following and basically just going from one all the way down on this side, then all the way down on this side till I run out of pins. You can kind of see here too with the code that Pro Micro 1 GPIO active, this first line here corresponds to that first pin there. I've managed to get these two keys working. I haven't done much more because I had to figure some stuff out, but these are working. Everything's working as expected. And you can see right there that I'm actually using a piece of copper wire to kind of ground everything. So this is my ground pin over here, and then everything's connected to that copper wire um, on the grounds. So I just have to do this for everything, and it's just, it's gonna take a while. This is taking way longer than I actually expected it to for direct wiring. So I guess probably a matrix would have actually been simpler. And this here is the aftermath of two hours of hand wiring, and here it is, completely done. So you're probably noticing something. There's a lot of cables here. Obviously it's a hand wired direct board. But the interesting thing that I realized while doing this is that I probably could have skipped on basically half of these wires by just connecting all the secondary pins to ground um, through the use of like a regular column. So if like, like took this and connected them all probably would have worked better. But I think it looks cool like this. It looks like interesting. Now I just have to assemble it. All right. So I just spent the last, I don't know, 15 minutes screwing screws into this thing. But here is the battery I'm going to be using. It's 100 ma. Should give me, I think, like three weeks of charge, maybe. I don't really know exactly, but it's the reason I'm using this one is because if I put the controller on here, like so, you'll see with this battery, it slides right underneath. So you can hide it underneath the thing there. Um, all I have to do, solder positive to positive, negative to negative, very simple, and then the build is done. So the last thing we have to do now is add my keycaps. Um, I don't know what these keycaps are exactly, but we'll add them and they should look good. What's funny about this is that I'm pressing enter and it's actually doing things on my computer because I don't have a off switch. So uh, just keep that in mind if you do build one of these without an off switch. There it is, completed after, I don't know, four hours probably. I'm happy with it. I think it came out pretty good. Um, one last final touch, actually. These are just cabinet bumpers. I use these as feet on my keyboards because they uh, make it grip a little bit better. So I'm going to add probably like, I don't know, six of them on this one. Probably one here, one here. And there it is. It is completed. 
There it is. I'm pretty happy with that. So I don't know what I think of this new format for this video. Um, I don't really know how I'm going to edit this either because it's a lot of footage I just shot. But I think this is probably a better way to do builds on my channel. Um, just kind of talk about what exactly I'm doing so you guys can get some information on it. But with that said, if you guys did enjoy this video, you know, hit the subscribe button, hit the like button, do all those things. I can't think right now. My brain's fried from fumes still. Um, whenever I solder, I get fried from this stuff. But yeah, that is the, um, the Scott Numb, and it's complete now. So another video coming out very soon on the actual code that's powering this. It's very simple. I do want to remind you again. I don't remember if I reminded you or not before, but there is a link in the description for the actual code to this board that you can take a look at along with all the STLs and stuff if you want to build it yourself. But with that said, I hope you enjoyed this and I'll see you next time.